What's going on everyone? My name is Cyan, and today we're going to be playing some Satisfactory. So, if you're not familiar with Satisfactory, it's a factory building game currently in early access. We start out dropped on an alien planet by our employer, Fix It. Our job is to create factories that process the local materials into advanced products called assembly parts and send them to Fix It via the space elevator. The game is currently broken up into four phases, with each phase requiring more complex parts than the last to complete. Now, since this isn't my first playthrough, I've planned out a route to help make the start of our game very, well, satisfactory. Our goal is to visit six crash sites, grab all the resources, power slugs, as many hard drives as we can, and really anything else we find along the way. This is an important part of the start, so I just want to kind of take a moment to go over it. My goal is to get three alternate recipes as soon as possible. Those being cast screw, iron wire, and stitched reinforced plate. We also want to get bolted modular frames, but that's for later. These recipes greatly simplify the next stage of items we'll need, so I want to make sure we get them before we unlock too much technology. Something important I realized while planning this out is that if I unlock new items and that item has an alternate recipe, it will be added to the possible options when I research hard drives. Because all three hard drives I need at the start are accessible immediately without unlocking anything, I'm going to delay unlocking extra stuff until all of the alternate recipes I need are unlocked. So that basically means I'm not going to unlock quartz or caterium or part assembly until I have have all the other stuff that I could want. So with that out of the way and hopefully a little bit of understanding as to why I'm going about this in the first place, I give you the hard drive run. All right, so with a very successful hard drive run, we end up at our base location. I pick out a spot to place down our hub before getting rudely interrupted. I drop down some portable miners and clear out the area for our first build. So I get started with a basic miner From there, I place down a smelter and a couple of constructors. I'm going to place four constructors and three smelters in total. Two constructors are going to make iron plates and the other two are going to make iron rods. And that'll get us started for the early game.
go ahead and set the recipes and then I start connecting power up. My goal is to have everything ready and working so when I power it on it's just off to the races. So I load up iron, connect up some belts, and make sure to set a couple of recipes before extending power over to these machines. Right, now I decide to stop and get the actual power turned on, so I make some biomass, fuel up our generators, and we are officially running. I go ahead and set the last two recipes for iron rods before powering up those machines. For now, I need to hand feed this iron rod constructor but that's only temporary. I make sure to grab some iron ore before taking out this extra portable miner. We don't need it anymore. And then I get to work on building the rest of our iron production. I'm gonna add three more constructors and two more smelters. Just gonna make more iron rods and iron plates. And we also get our first MAM research, which is very exciting. And we also realize that our power is not meeting demand. Alright, that sound means we got a hard drive, so let's place down our MAM. And I like to put a crafting bench nearby so I don't have to run back and forth and see what we got. And we got really lucky. We got iron wire, stitched iron plate, and cast screw, but cast screw is the most useful. So we're gonna go ahead and pick that to start before getting another hard drive underway. We also had a slight issue with our power, so I think it's time we add a few biomass burners. I'm just gonna place two down. I like having a little space, so I add that one for a walkway. Get these wired up before, of course, making some fuel and getting them running. Okay, so with power settled, I head back to working on iron. I make sure the smelters are fully fueled before setting the recipes in the remaining constructors. My goal now is to just gather enough resources to unlock logistics, which is going to greatly increase the efficiency of our base. So this whole next part is just making sure machines are running efficiently, or running period, and gathering as many resources as I can. It doesn't take long for us to get enough resources to unlock logistics, so of course we do that next. We're now able to add splitters, mergers, and conveyor lifts to our belts. Thanks to having splitters, I no longer have to split up the iron ingots that are in the constructors and can just let the machines run. Unfortunately, I do have to run to all the machines to grab the resources and hand feed the remaining iron smelters. All right, next thing I do is place down an equipment bench and craft up a couple of portable miners. I head on over to the limestone deposit and get to work setting up a basic concrete build. I'm gonna place down four portable miners. This is just gonna help us jumpstart the production. And then I place down an actual mine. And I follow that up with some constructors. Now, this mine can only technically support three constructors making concrete, but I'm gonna place a total of six. 
and that's just to kind of jump start the early game because um, we need a lot of concrete for milestones so once those are all placed I wire everything together and at this point I'm just trying to conserve what copper resources I have left Once everything is wired up, I can set all the recipes and grab some limestone from the portable miners to get everything working. I do go around back and add a splitter and hook up two of the constructors to the mine. Even though these belts can't fully support this right now, it's better to have it working at partial efficiency than not running at all. And uh, last thing I do here is grab uh, the rest of the limestone and try and make sure all the constructors are working. If you heard that sound, it means it's MAM research time. We got really lucky again. We got iron wire and stitched plate. So this time I pick stitched plate. I also take a moment to unlock overclocking and get power shards working fully. So we can now underclock machines. And with that out of the way, take a look at what remaining research I have before getting another hard drive going. Now, thanks to our concrete build, we're able to get Logistics Mark II working. So with that unlocked, I decide to finish upgrading our iron build. To encourage additional verticality, layer poles now have a stackable barrier. With Logistics Mark II, we're able to hook up all of our iron smelters and have this fully functional and automated. From there, I head back up to concrete and dismantle the unneeded machines. I place down a merger so that everything will group up into one location. And then using the belt that I built to get up here, I send everything down to one location and put it in a chest. Eventually. I decided to leave this fourth constructor working because it still had lots of concrete before running around to the back and hooking up the remaining constructor and upgrading the belt. It's time to upgrade our power once again, so I add two more biomass burners. Of course, getting those wired up and connected to our grid. And then making more fuel. Alright, and the last thing on our list for the starter build is to get a copper setup going. So I drag some power over and get to work. Thankfully, because we had a good hard drive run, I could keep copper simple. All I need to worry about right now is making wire and cables. So two smelters will be enough to get us going. I place down four constructors and get them all set up producing wire. Follow that up with a final constructor to produce the cable. And with all that hooked up, we had our basic copper production. copper out of the way we get our last hard drive we got really lucky and end up getting iron wire completing the trio 
From here, I decide to make sure I can get the rebar gun once we have rotors unlocked, so I grab structural analysis. Next, I decide to unlock foundations and complete all of the tier one milestones before adding on to our power plant yet again. This time I decide to add four biomass generators and I also prepare for biofuel, or solid biofuel, excuse me, by putting down a very basic setup here that will automatically turn our biomass into biofuel, solid biofuel. I get our power generators wired together. I realize I could do this in an easier way. And then I also notice that I don't yet have obstacle clearing, so we go ahead and get that unlocked. I'm now able to set the recipe for solid biofuel. Biofuel will ensure maximum efficiency of biomass burners. To aid in biofuel production, you are now Next, I craft down as much biomass as I possibly can so I can get that running. While that's getting set up, I shift my focus to our iron production and finally add some chests and get these outputs grouped up. So for here, I'm just gonna have two iron rods and two iron plates. And I'm gonna convert the remaining three constructors into cast screws. So I can remove that leftover smelter and switch over the recipes. I also remember to downgrade everything to only make 40 a minute. That way we will consume the right amount of iron and everything will work out nice. And the last step is to connect everything up. Alright, moving right along, we unlock part assembly. And of course, gotta take a moment to make a chainsaw. And a quick object scanner. Alright, with part assembly unlocked, I start up our last hard drive to try and get bolted frames, and I get to work clearing out the foliage around the base. Of course, doing the constant loop, crafting down biomass, cutting down more trees. Pete. I think we could have a little more fun with this. Let's, let's go on an adventure. With a successful run complete, we got back to base, 
This time, we did not get the hard drive we wanted, so we grab copper alloy ingot and get working on the mycelia tree. So one of the really nice things about going out and doing that little exploration is we grabbed a bunch of mycelia, which can be used to unlock fabric, um, and then can be used later to unlock the parachute. Now the parachute is really er useful in the early game. Um, it allows you to jump off of high heights and fly around. It's reusable, so it's gonna be super useful for us. I make one right away. And then use the fruits of our trip to make up a bunch of biomass for our power plant. Next, I unlock the resource sink program. And I take a look at how our iron production is doing and just top off our resources here. Now, some of you might think I'm kind of crazy, but hear me out. I use the circuit boards and some of the computers I gathered um, to get 18 tickets in the awesome sink. I use those tickets to unlock a bunch of useful customization stuff. And then I get to work placing down some new machines. So right now we're gonna place down a couple of assemblers and get our basic rotors and reinforced plates underway. But once we've got those in hand, we can get these machines working. Now this is gonna be enough to get us started, but we're gonna need a lot more than this. So I wanna make sure our power is set before expanding the base more. So let's drop a bunch of fuel into all these generators. I don't have quite enough for everything, but I can split it up between them. Power out of the way, let's get to work on a rotor and reinforced plate build. Now, I thought I'd freshen things up a little bit and try my hand at a time lapse, so let me know what you think. All right, so with rotors and reinforced plates fully automated, I decide to grab the rebar gun. Now we are in need of the bolted modular frames recipe and we are out of hard drives. So I think it's time we take our fancy new equipment and go do a little hard drive run. So I grab a constructor and set that up to produce a couple more ammo. And with that, let's go, uh, let's go on an adventure.
All right, just like that, we're back at the base with more hard drives. I stopped to make sure our power generators are fully stocked, even the ones in the hub. And that's when our next MAM research completes. And boy, oh boy, did we get lucky. Bolted modular frames right there. So obviously I picked that and get to work on expanding the base. So first things first, we gotta put down a bunch of foundations and I decide to move the power plant over onto foundations first. I also rebuild our solid biofuel production. And then I tear out the original power plant. After that, I rebuild the hub making sure that it's in the right spot. And of course I had to reroute the concrete chest as well. With power rebuilt, I get the biomass production working again. And then my next step is to get iron rebuilt. But let's, let's do it the fast way. Uh, no, not yet. Hold on, just a little bit longer. Yeah, look at that, it's done. So, I rebuilt iron, scaled it a little bit differently to make us some more iron rods and iron plates and less iron screws, and then routed everything neatly into a chest. All right, so with the iron line fresh out in the microwave, I decide to shift my focus to copper. So I build out a platform for us to work on but I come to the realization that I'd rather have everything empty out. So I shut off the power to the miner and decide it's time for modular frames.
All right, so with modular frames built and running, we can shift our focus to copper again. Everything has emptied out, so I can tear out everything that's left and start with a fully clean slate. Now the only difference in this build is I want to add copper sheets as well so that we have them for the next phase. So I just take a minute to lay out the machines, make sure we have enough space, and then I get to work. Alrighty, and just like that, we have fully automated all of our starter resources. Now there's only one thing left for us to do in this phase, and that is build the space elevator and launch off some smart plating. So first thing to do is build some assemblers and get them set up to make smart plates.
with smart plating being made, I decided now was a good time to rebuild the MAM. So I placed that behind the hub and put down a little storage box nearby. I also transferred over all the relevant items and took a second to quickly unlock and craft up all the yellow power slugs that I had. I stopped to unlock jump pads, as that's our last milestone left in phase one, milestone reached. Several before shifting my focus to working on the space elevator platform. Caution is recommended during use of these products. I decided it would be fun to use a jump pad instead of a ladder to get up and down from the space elevator platform. So I set one of those up and get it wired up. With our jump pad functional, I could get to work on clearing off the hilltop for the space elevator. Personally, the uh, space elevator construction is one of my favorite animations in the game. So I decided to have a little fun with it and uh, turn it into something that I'm kind of proud of and think came out cool. So I'm going to stop talking, sit back, enjoy, and I'll catch you on the outro. And with that, phase one was complete. So I just want to say a huge thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, leave a like. I got a lot more stuff coming. Um, and with that, I'm just going to leave you with a couple of shots of what we accomplished today. So thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.